diabetic complications, both acute and chronic. Okay, I'm going to start with just a brief description of the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So first we'll draw a little pancreas. And the pancreas contains a variety of cells that make different products, but the beta cells are those that make insulin. And in type 1 diabetes, what happens is the white blood cells attack and destroy the beta cells that make insulin. So it's pretty tragic and it is an autoimmune disease. And in this case then, the person will be able to make little or no insulin. Type 2 diabetes is different. In this case, what's happening is that the, the insulin demands in the body are so high that the pancreas can't keep up with it. So the pancreas is unable to make enough insulin for exceptionally high needs because type 2 diabetes is associated with what's called insulin resistance. It's kind of like drug tolerance where more and more insulin is needed to get glucose to enter cells. So next we'll look at the cardinal symptoms of diabetes. These are the reasons and the symptoms that would send someone to the doctor um, if it's a chronic kind of thing anyway. This could act, they could end up with an acute case. So hyperglycemia is one thing that they would be testing positive for. So they would have high blood sugar after eating and usually in the morning and this would be because no matter how much, in the case of type 2 diabetes, no matter how much insulin they're still able to make, it is not enough to allow glucose to enter cells. Polyuria is another symptom, and that is frequent urination, and it's basically because they're peeing out um, excess glucose that they are unable to um, absorb into cells because of a lack of insulin. Because they're urinating so much, they're thirsty, they're getting dehydrated. And uh, they'll be losing weight and probably be hungry. Wait, this is polyphagia. And this is because they are forced to live off of their fats and proteins because they're unable to use glucose to make uh, ATP, at least not in very uh, high amounts, because the lack of insulin or not in, the inadequate amounts of insulin make it so blood sugar um, or glucose can't enter cells to be used for ATP production. these are the main symptoms. So the cardinal symptoms would be hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, polyuria, frequent urination, polydipsia, very thirsty. Oops, I said dehydrated, but so they're thirsty because they're dehydrated. So the, the polydipsia is actually the thirsty symptom. 
And then polyphagia means they're hungry, usually accompanied with um, unexplained weight loss. Um, and then they go to the doctor. So these are the cardinal symptoms. And then this first box would be a very cursory difference between type 1, type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is the one that is associated with a lifestyle, meaning basically diet and exercise or lack thereof. Type 1, as I mentioned already, is an autoimmune disease. In the old days, it primarily was a problem that children would get, and type 2 diabetes was a problem that primarily adults would get, although we're seeing more and more children with type 2 diabetes, so they don't usually call this adult onset anymore, as was common for a long time. Okay, now let's look at acute crisis of diabetes, and we'll do this one in purple. So the acute crisis is ketoacidosis. And what happens is that communication between the liver, the fat cells, and the pancreas is not working right. So normally what happens is insulin will um, tell the liver to stop putting out uh, sugar. So, um, let's see, and it will tell adipose tissue to stop putting out fat into the blood. But um, let's use a different color, how about just a black. So adipose tissue will be releasing fatty acids and many of those will end up in the liver. And when the liver is getting this very high amount of fatty acids due to lipolysis, it's getting all these fatty acids and that stimulates it to perform ketogenesis. And these ketones can be used as energy in the blood, but you don't want to have too many of them because they make the blood acidic. So we all have normal amounts of these from time to time, and it's perfectly healthy. The liver will also be putting out um, more sugar by breaking down its glycogen. And normally, insulin inhibits all of this. So normally insulin inhibits lipolysis and normally it inhibits uh, ketogenesis and glycogenolysis. But in diabetes, there isn't enough insulin to inhibit lipolysis or ketogenesis or glycogenolysis. And so blood sugar rises too high and blood ketones rise too high. So let's write that over here. or to um, increase um, cellular oops, uptake of glucose. So blood glucose goes too high after a meal and in the morning and ketones go too high. So now we can think about what's happening in this patient. They're going to have um, increased ketones which acidify the blood too much 
And because of this, they're going to um, test very high on urine strips for ketones. And like I said, we can all make ketones, and normally insulin will inhibit us from making too many ketones, but in a diabetic, they can't make enough insulin to inhibit too much keto acid or ketogenesis. And then also because of um, the patient will be panting or breathing rapidly. And by blowing off carbon dioxide by breathing rapidly, the patient can bring their blood pH back into a normal range, or at least that's what they're attempting to do, because carbon dioxide makes your blood acidic. So if you can blow off more carbon dioxide, your blood will be less acidic. And then another um, thing that will be noted is that they will have um, dehydration. So this is one big symptom. Oops, I'll just do it like this. Then another big symptom is uh, dehydration due to the polyuria from trying to urinate out all that extra glucose that can't go into the cells anyway. And this could lead to hypovolemic shock. organ failure would be the scariest outcome there. And this is why it is a crisis. And then the cure for the crisis is, you guessed it, an insulin injection. Because when they get, so treat a ketoacidotic crisis with insulin, because the insulin will inhibit glycogenolysis, which will decrease blood sugar. It will inhibit ketogenesis, which will decrease blood acidity. And it will inhibit lipolysis, which stimulates ketogenesis. And it will stimulate muscle cells and other cells to allow glucose inside, which will also lower blood sugar. So ta-da, insulin cures the crisis. Okay, and then the bottom of the page, we're going to talk about chronic complications of diabetes. And those really come down to um, blood vessel damage by high blood sugar. So chronic complications are um, blood vessel and nerve, oops, vessel and nerve damage. and also infections and poor wound healing. So blood vessels are damaged by high blood sugar. So let's put a couple of little atherosclerotic plaques in this blood vessel. So the high blood sugar damages blood vessels walls. Um, and the reason for that is believed to be that it's oxidizing uh, blood vessel walls, so cells. And oxidized cells um, wounds them So these wounded blood vessels are spackled over with cholesterol and um, other fatty substances that, and then it has like a hard case on top of it. But anyway, so you get these atheromas. And that therefore helps to understand why diabetics have more heart disease and strokes because they have clogged arteries on in their coronary arteries and in their brain 
It also helps us understand why they have vision loss because the blood vessels that lead to the retina are damaged and then that causes vision loss. It also helps us understand why they have kidney damage because these are capillaries damaged and then that um, uh, so over time damages the organ itself. They also have neuropathies or, or, a, or decreased sensation in their extremities. And this um, might be because of chronic high insulin levels if they're type 2 diabetic. It might be because of blood vessel damage. And some people believe that the high blood sugar and the insulin itself is damaging the nerve endings. Don't understand all of what's going on there, but we do know that um, the chronic complication can be neuropathy. And then you have a bad situation where um, if they have a decreased sensation in their extremities and then they stub their toe, now the high blood sugar um, causes poor wound healing and also um, the high blood sugar uh, encourages pathogenic growth so it's more likely they'll get an infection because pathogens love sugar so the chronic complications of um, type 2 diabetes can mostly come down to damaged blood vessels that cause this whole cascade of other bad effects.